let's do this. Hi, I'm Andre and I'm a black nerd and I think it's very obvious and known that there's been a lot of talk uh, in the world lately over the concept of Black Lives Matter. Putting a spotlight on the issues that black people have on a regular basis, from the high levels of dealing with police brutality and being racially profiled, all the way down to the microaggressions that a black person can deal with in their day-to-day -day life at work or in a social atmosphere. And so there's obviously been a lot of petitions, protests, donations, causes, Lots of different ways of talking in real life and on social media to try to make things better. I've given out some resources, I've donated to some causes, I, I'll put a link or two in the description here if you need more information. But it's definitely been a conversation that's been happening and that's probably long overdue when you really think about it. Some side effects stuff occurred while working on the main stuff. There are some changes that have happened that I wasn't even thinking about and when I saw it I was like, Okay, that makes sense. It's just I wasn't thinking about it. So first off, Gone with the Wind. I, you know, Gone with the Wind is not a movie I've watched. You know, I have not seen that movie. I don't think anyone is surprised by the fact that I have not seen that movie. When someone's asking me, Andre, what movies you grow up with? And I'm responding with, you know, Gremlins, Ghostbusters, Goonies, the Ninja Turtle movies, the Tim Burton and Joel Schumacher Batman films, the Chipmunk Adventure, the Jetsons Meet the Flintstones, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Little Shop of Horrors, Space Jam, the, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Oh, and Gone with the Wind. Like, no one was thinking that was ever going to happen. <laughs> but, you know, Gone with the Wind. Very popular film. Oscar award winning film. First Oscar winner for an African American winning an Academy Award. Hattie McDaniel. But also a movie that, you know, is in the South and glorifies that time period when slavery was a big thing and has some depictions that you're just like, yeah. So HBO Max was like, you know what? They said they were just going to take it down for a few days, figure out something they can put on it, a disclaimer, if you will, and put it back up. And some people lost their freaking mind with this. People were crazy buying Gone with the Wind DVDs because they thought this movie was never going to return. Is that what it takes to get physical media to come back? Warner Brothers has done this before. They have put out old Looney Tunes cartoons. Them old ones, they're great, but there's a few of them that have some, some things in them. So sometimes they have put disclaimers in front of showing those cartoons when they've made like archives on DVD and stuff to say, we're showing this for historical purposes. However, we understand that some depictions that are seen in some of these animated shorts, not really good today, wasn't really good even back then. And that's all they did with Gone with the Wind. They brought it back, they put a disclaimer in front of it, a little short that was just like, hey, wanna talk about Gone with the Wind and all the impact it had and this and the other, but also there's some problems with it too. Let's make that clear. Take note, here's your movie. And I think that makes sense. You know, if you wanna keep the film up, I think it is important to have that conversation. That being said, I'm still probably not gonna watch it. Do you know that HBO Max has Josie and the Pussycats? Why am I gonna watch Gone with the Wind when the Josie and the Pussycats movie is on HBO Max? When you give me the choice between Gone with the Wind and Josie and the Pussycats, I'm looking at Gone with the Wind and going, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. <laughs> Jenny Slate comes out as like, look, I voice a black character in Big Mouth. I don't think that's right, especially now seeing what I'm seeing. I'm gonna drop. And then Kristen Bell was like, oh shoot, I just came out with this cartoon Central Park and I'm voicing a biracial character. I should probably drop. The funny thing about Kristen Bell is I actually watched Central Park. I didn't know she voiced that character. Like I had heard that she was in the show, but when I watched the first couple episodes, I was like, yeah, this is a cool show, but everyone keeps saying Kristen Bell is in it. And when they told me which character she was, I was like, Oh, it's her? I did not look at that character and go, oh yeah, that's Anna from Frozen. I did not look at that biracial girl and go, that's Veronica Mars. That is not what was going on in my mind. But she was like, I'm out. And then the Simpsons were like, look, we already had problems with a poo. Now we're just going to say no people of color in the Simpsons will be voiced by white people. It's done. I was like, wait a minute. There is a very popular black character that I know from a very popular primetime animated show who I know, who everyone knows is voiced by a white person. Now, 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 now. Yeah, man. Mike Henry, the voice of Cleveland Brown from Family Guy is like, can't do it no more. You had all these people coming out and be like, well, that's not fair. Why does Phil Lamar and Cree Summer get the voice 
people who are not black people, but blah, blah, blah. Can we stop with the Phil Lamar Cree Summer argument? If you are using the same black person for your argument, you're kind of making the point. If the only voice actors you're mentioning as a possible rebuttal are Phil Lamar and Cree Summer, you are kind of making the point. You even left out Kevin Michael Richardson? Come on! Okay. I know it's a tricky subject when you talk about voice acting because one of the joys of voice acting is that anyone can voice anyone. You know, you got males voicing females, females voicing males. You got kids being voiced by adults, adults being voiced by kids. People voicing animals and creatures that don't exist or don't talk. Like you get a lot of that in voice acting and animation. That being said, there's still a disproportionately small amount of black voice actors. There are some, but they're not as many as others, so when you have the opportunity to cast a black person when you create a black character in animation, kind of a good thing to do it. You know, Rugrats did it, <laughs> Craig of the Creek did it, <laughs> Wayne Head did it. You know, it is what it is, man. Again, not really was on the top of my list <laughs> of things to change during this time period. There's some things I would like to change that's more important. The cartoons are still gonna be cartoons. The movies are still gonna be the movies, but with disclaimers. At least you're still getting those things. The same cannot be said for some episodes of TV shows that have blackface in them. Boy, you know the Dukes of Hazard is worried. Man, with all these Confederate flags being taken down, them Duke boys are in a heap of trouble. <laughs> That car, that General Lee is gonna jump up in the air <laughs> and it's never gonna come back down. <laughs> it's gonna like, woo, freeze frame. And they're like, oh, we just, we just gonna stay here, huh? <laughs> and you know who gonna snitch on the General Lee? Uh, Roscoe P. Coltrane. <laughs> Boss Hog, we finally got him. <laughs> A cheat, cheat, cheat. <laughs> I'm joking because I actually used to watch The Dukes of Hazzard. Am I terrible? I knew, I knew it was wrong, but I lived in the South. It aired all the time. What did, Daisy Dukes, man. Things are made for their time. You know, there's a lot of things that were acceptable in its time that may just not be now. And the thing about it is there's no one right answer. Sometimes reevaluating something means you want to add a disclaimer. Other times it's going to mean removing a scene or an entire thing. Sometimes it's going to be fine the way it is because of the context of it. Like there's no particular way of going, there's one rule for all of it. You kind of have to look at it at a case by case basis. But you know what? This is an easy fix. Some of the things that we're talking about that need to be fixed in regards to Black Lives Matter is not gonna be an easy fix. It's gonna take some time and it's gonna be met with a lot of opposition. Cutting out one blackface joke in an episode and the episode remains intact, you can walk away from. You can't walk away from a death from a bullet. But you can walk away from an episode that just has one scene cut. <sighs> sorry, did I get too dark, too serious right there? I'm sorry. But it's crazy, man. Movies got changed. Television shows got changed. Cartoons got changed. Theme parks thought they were out. Theme parks were sneaking right outside the door. And then right when the theme parks got right outside that door, they were like, nope, you get back here. We gotta talk about Splash Mountain because it doesn't make sense. Disney has a ride for a movie that they will not release. If you cannot even put the film on Disney Plus with a disclaimer, you can't have a ride. Six Flags is not gonna build a ride based on the black mama character from Tom and Jerry. Yeah, dude. So here's the thing. I have heard from white Disney fans for the past few years, this concept of what if we just change Splash Mountain to a Princess and the Frog ride? I love Tiana, but I feel like Tiana is white Disney fans. Um, I have a black friend. Like, 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 they, like they always wanna mention Tiana whenever it's necessary. <laughs> what I kept hearing as a suggestion was, let's just replace Br'er Rabbit with Tiana. I'm like, but you gonna keep the Briar Patch? Like, it's still the same thing. You can't just say it's Splash Mountain and like change a character or two. No, you gotta like go all in. You gotta go full Tower of Terror to Guardians of the Galaxy. So that's why when Disney released what they released, I was like, okay, that's what I'm talking about. What Disney did was like, nah, the whole ride gotta change. <laughs> and I was like, yes, <laughs> that's how it's done. If you gonna change it, you gotta go all in. I need to hear, are you ready when I'm on that ride? That is a requirement. I got 
friends on the other side. That needs to be in that ride, dude. I want a dark tunnel, and I want that Keith David voice bouncing off of the halls and the walls. <laughs> and I just need that to happen, man. Are you ready? I need that in that ride. You got those people. It's tradition. It's the purest thing. You can't change it. Yes, you can. <laughs> and don't worry, your pants are still gonna get wet. Walk around all day like this? Can they change that part of the ride? You better be lucky that Splash Mountain's the one to change it. If I was up in there, if I was an Imagineer, I'd be like, you know, Pirates is right next to the New Orleans section. <laughs> Pirates is a slow ride, a nice cool ride, just like a cool ride down a lily pad. The beginning of that ride definitely got some Prince and the Frog vibes. If I was up in there, you would have lost your Pirates. <laughs> I've been like, Pirates of Princess of the Frog, move Pirates over to Splash Mountain, and make a movie starring Margot Robbie. <laughs> Look, man, I'm in shambles. I am going crazy. Look at me, I'm molting. This is how I have to cope. This is how I have to cope. Jokes and alcohol, that's all I got. That's all I got. So kudos to Disney for deciding to make some progress by changing Splash Mountain into a Princess and the Frog ride. I think that's great. You know what would be even greater is if you made a Princess Tiana Princess and the Frog sequel where she's a princess the entire time and not a frog. Like that'd be really cool if you did that. All this being said, I still ain't going to Disneyland anytime soon. <laughs> I'm sorry, until this virus is cleared, you can change every single ride to a black ride. I ain't rolling up there. You can make a proud family ride. <laughs> <laughs> which I kind of want now that I said it. <laughs> but still, as long as there's a virus, as long as I have to trust that other people are gonna wear masks, I ain't going in that park. Yeah, man, change is gonna happen. <laughs> when, you, when you have a big discussion like this, and there's so many big things that need to be changed, little things like this are gonna happen. When black people were fighting for Black Lives Matter, I don't think the top of their list was change Splash Mountain. It's a nice gesture, but it wasn't the top of the list. Because yeah, you might be arguing about is it a good thing or not to change the theme park ride or change the voice actor of a black cartoon character or to put warnings on movies that may have racist depictions in them even if you want to preserve the history of the film. Have your discussions about that all you want to. But you know what's also important? Getting to a point in life where an unarmed black person is not killed by a police officer where a black person just trying to have their regular life of walking down the street with their dog or hanging out with their friends at a barbecue doesn't mean that someone's gonna call the police on them because they feel so threatened by their presence. That black people who are doing a great job at their work are not paid significantly less for no reason other than their race or have to deal with microaggressions every single day by working there. To get to a point where black people aren't seen as threats or the other first until proven otherwise. And then when proven otherwise, being told that you're one of the good ones. Maybe get to a point where creative black people can get jobs doing what they love and not being passed over because someone doesn't think they're the right type for a mainstream audience or when they finally get one stopping. That black people can go to events that they're invited to and not have their badge constantly checked to make sure they didn't sneak in even though they were personally invited to the convention or event. I wouldn't know anybody that's ever gone through that process multiple times himself. That black people can just stop having to live a harder life all the time because of their skin and because of existing. We just wanna live our lives without fear that our lives are in danger for just being us. Police are supposed to protect us. We shouldn't be afraid of them. Our jobs are supposed to treat us right when we do work. Able to enjoy public places like every other American. We should not feel like someone's going to attack us just for that, just for existing. But yeah, theme park changing or a voice actor changing is cool too. I just had to get that off my chest. I'll talk about Artemis Fowl or some shit next time. Bye.